AI is here and AI is here to stay. However, if you're an academic, I'd recommend against using ChatGPT for your academic research because the references it gives you are fake. It isn't tailored towards academic learning and academic research. So here are six tools that I'm going to be sharing with you today that are free to use for the most part. Um, test them out for yourself, see if they suit your kind of research area and your needs. And we're going to go through all of them today to show you how to help you through finding research papers, linking ideas, doing a systematic review, writing better, um, interrogating PDFs, and it just, yeah, it's amazing. So we're gonna go through it today. Okay, so let's start off with chat PDF. So this is an interesting one that I discovered a little while ago and I actually really like it. So this is what it looks like. It's really simple, really clean. You just drop your PDF document here. So this can be any document. It could be a literature, a um, bit of literature that you've downloaded. It could be um, something else that you've written. So essentially, I'm just gonna click that one um, that I did a, a little while ago. So you can kind of see what you can get out of it. So here's the paper, it's 16 pages long, so it's quite long. And I just want to understand it a little bit better. So the first thing you can see is that it asks me some questions that are example questions that are kind of like prompting me. So um, one it's asked is, how does the actin cytoskeleton generate force? and what are its implications? So it's actually picked out some interesting questions for me to think about for this paper, even if I hadn't necessarily asked any questions yet. So I said, summarize this paper, and it gave me a kind of a good summary, kind of reviewing what it's about, and what the article explains, and what it discusses, and how it concludes. So I really like that, I think it's a great summary. The next thing I asked was, how does the act inside skeleton generate force? So that's something a bit more specific, a little bit more scientific. Again, it gave me a really good um, sort of summary, but it also told me to scroll to this area to get some references about what they're speaking about. So that's really good. What are the main results? And this is something that I thought was really interesting that I pointed out. So this is actually a review paper, so there are no main results. Um, and it said, as it's a review article, it does not present any new experimental results. And I was really impressed by that. So uh, yeah, so something to note. Um, and then I said, what are some gaps in this research area? And one of the questions that I get a lot is, how can I find a gap in literature, things like that? So I thought a review paper would be a really good uh, place where it would normally state, although we know this information, little is known about this and that. So I thought it'd be able to pick out those keywords from this paper and actually it was able to do that really well so as you can see it says there are several gaps in the research area um, one of them is about the ambiguity of this the term itself another one is about the structure another one is about the molecular composition and so on and so forth so it gives you a really good idea for where to begin so yeah i really like this i think it's not only able to explain it in, a, in an easy way, but also goes into quite a lot of scientific detail, which is really good and really handy. Okay, moving on to the next one. The next one is called Lit Maps. And essentially the name kind of tells you what it does. It's a map of the literature. As you can see here, you can input your keywords uh, and search for some literature or an author, or if you know the specific papers, you can also do it like that. Um, and you're able to discover new papers. You can visualize uh, the map of what, how other articles join together. You can share it with your collaborators and you can also export it in a nice way to kind of show what that looks like if you want to include it in your research paper and also kind of get notifications for it too. So um, here's an example of what I've done to show you um, <laughs> before. So essentially the, the idea is that you have a seed paper. So there's this idea of seed paper, which is essentially your base paper, the paper that you think is most important to your research or most relevant to your research. And that is the base and everything else sort of stems from that research paper. So you can input that paper there and you can search for it if you want. So I'm gonna search for one. And you can kind of just scroll through and sort of see how many references this has, how many times it's been cited and how many citations it has and things like that. And a bit more, a bit more detail, I think you can include it here so that's quite nice to be able to see um and then let's say we agree on i don't know let's say we agree on this one you can generate a seed map so what it does is it takes that paper that you're interested in and it generates a map of similar papers um and it kind of prompts you to take a look at those papers and they're related in a number of different ways and this platform calculates that for you and it goes into a lot more detail 
I think it's quite important for you to know how it generates this map so you are able to recognize whether or not you want to use this platform. Um, but actually it's, got, it's quite cool because it has this support section here on the left hand side. These blog posts are really, really good actually. So how to find research gaps in minutes and they give you two ways to find a research gap. So using your own literature review and secondly using an existing literature review. So this is really handy and it tells you exactly how to do it. Um, and it's actually really good. And the other one I like is how to understand their visual visualization. So if you're not quite sure what this means, this is also a good way of kind of telling you what these mean. And the last one I liked was this one using systematic reviews, how to input this information into a systematic review. I think that's really handy as well. So yeah, just have a little kind of um, play around with it. It's really handy, really helpful, helps you discover new papers as well. Okay, so moving on to the next one. This is one of my favorite platforms, one of my favorite AI research-based platforms. It's called Site, and it has this tool called Site Assistant, and I have shared it before on my, on my channel. And essentially, it's a place where you are able to ask questions and get support that is always cited and always referenced using research papers. So it's genuine. <laughs> um, and that's really important for you as, a, as an academic. So let's ask a question. Um, I've asked this question. So is there a gap in knowledge about how the cell cortex is nucleated? So I want to ask a quite general question and I want to see what it pulls out and how it pulls it out. Um, you can change the settings. So you can say only include papers within a certain time frame. You can change the settings here and say, um, for example, always use references, don't always use them, let the assistant decide um, what journals you want to take a look at from, um, what kind of publications you want to, 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 to be looked at, how many publications to consult. So you can ask it to consult like 40 publications, which will make your answer a lot more, of course, specific and tailored. But I think 10 is more than enough. Okay, and as you can see, it's generated this answer for me. It's essentially giving me a bit of a summary as to the topic area, and then it's given me some parts of the research that we don't quite understand. They said that there may be different mechanisms. There might be um, this understanding that we don't know. There might be a lack of this understanding. We need more research to understand these processes. And then it summarizes in, in summary, whilst there's some understanding of this, there are still gaps in our knowledge and it gives you the information. And the nice thing about it, if you probably can notice, is that the references are all quite recent, which is a good sign. If they were referencing things from 2012, 2013, 2014, um, predominantly that's quite concerning because what's happened in the last 10 years like where's that research but their research is from 2022 21 um 2022 20, 21 um this is 2014 and this is actually someone from my research group and this is actually quite an important paper for this topic so it's good that they've mentioned it as well here um and it looks at how many searches like what kind of searches they did um to be able to get this response so again i love this platform i think it's so good for getting concise answers with uh, research to back it up. Okay, so the next one is called SciSpace and I believe they actually changed their name to Typeset if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyway, this is another platform that's quite similar to ChatPDF, a little bit more academic um, tailored, but it's a, a kind of scientific space where you are able to ask questions and interrogate PDFs as well. Um, so what you can do here is you can have a library and kind of save some papers in your library as well if you'd like. And then you can also upload a PDF. So as you can see here, I've uploaded a PDF. And the nice thing about this, again, is it gives you some questions that it's suggesting that are general questions that you should know, more specific questions that you should know, and also some questions that you might have asked yourself. I really like this because this is essentially a way to revise if you've got a vibe coming up or some sort of like um, presentation coming up. It's really handy to kind of know what are the key things you need to know about every paper. So like. Um, methods, data, conclusions, limitations, things like that. If you have any maths, it can also explain it to you. And I did test it out. I'm not sure if this one has any maths, but it can um, test out and explain maths and tables to you. I don't think this one has any tables, unfortunately, but I've tried it and it actually does work. So <laughs> do try it out for yourself if you want to. Another feature it has is you can use the AI search tool as well, just to ask some questions. So I've asked the same question about a gap in knowledge, about how the cell cortex is nucleated. So let's see how, how it answers this and how it kind of comes up. Okay, this is interesting. So it gives an insight from five papers um, and it gives you 
what's interesting, quite recent papers about the cell cortex. And it says, yes, there's a gap. Yes, there's a gap. It doesn't provide about a gap. No, this is really cool. So you're able to get some insights and you can also add some other suggestions as well to kind of collate your data. And I think this would be really helpful if you're doing like a systematic review um, or any kind of review, meta review um, paper as well. Okay, so the next one is called Graph Maker. I'm frequently asked about AI tools that will help you generate images and make graphs for you and things like that. And I've found and stumbled across this one called Graph Maker. And you can see that you're able to generate a graph instantly using AI. Um, and you can use it either by dropping your CSV data, you can use Google Sheets, connect it to your Google Sheets account, or use some sample data. And you can also talk to the data. So let's just use some sample data so you can see what that could look like. So here's the data, it's all given to me there. So then I've asked it to make a pie chart of top genre. So that is this column here. And as you can see, it has made me a pie chart. And that was really quick, actually. And you can clearly see that the, the large category is dance pop. And then the smallest categories are over here with 1%. So this is lovely. I think this is great. And if you're able to import your data here and quickly generate some images like this, that would work really well. And last but not least, this is Research Rabbit. And they like to call themselves the Spotify for research papers um, because essentially it generates, you give it one paper and then it gives you recommendations for other papers that you, they think you might like. And then they also give you notifications and they kind of give you suggestions, similar to how a Spotify would do it for music as well. So I guess that's where that's come from. So I, I find Research Rabbit a little bit too busy for my liking personally you might find that you actually really enjoy this kind of layout. Um, but essentially you input one paper and you can either have your own collection, you can connect to Zotero, which is your library that you've been collecting anyway. So it's quite a nice sort of seamless way of doing it. And then it can, you can explore other papers. So you can explore papers that are similar. Um, you can explore papers that are earlier work. So older work, you can explore like later work. You can explore different authors, suggested authors. It really goes into a lot of detail. And then I really like this kind of image and you're able to use these images to export it and add it to your dissertation or your essay if you want to as well. I think this works quite well. And you can modify the type of graph with timeline like that. So you can clearly see sort of what that looks like in terms of year, that looks quite good. And you can also add different, change the author layout um, as, you, as you wish. So yeah, I, th I think I quite like it. This, this kind of, these platforms take a lot of kind of playing around and understanding, make sure that you know how they're generating these connections. But I think it could be quite useful and save a lot of time, especially if you're, you don't want to be searching every single day for literature. I hope that you enjoyed learning and discovering another set of AI tools to help you with your research. There are so many more out there if you want another part to this video that I would definitely make it for you in a few weeks time. And if you have any other suggestions that you'd like to leave down below, then let me know and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.